Hello and welcome to Mike's Garage. Here we are. Um, what do I want to say? I want to say, please don't forget to subscribe. In other words, if you haven't already subscribed, please do. You will be notified every time we come out with a new video. And if you be sure and click on the little bell, you'll get an audible message like beep, it's time. Anyway, so please do that. Um, and I think that takes care of all the important things we have to say other than what we're doing. And what we are doing today is we're going to put a cylinder on this, this Evo motor. Um, in our last video, we put the lifters and the lifter blocks and the uh, uh, pressure sensor. And we put in the tappet screen and the timing plug. And this motor is really coming together. So... Now what I want to do is we're going to put a we're going to put a piston and a cylinder on it. Now, in the last video we actually showed how to set the rings, how to check the rings for the right end play. End play. That's not correct. End gap. It's this gap right here in the piston ring. Now, I'd like to call to everybody's attention some things everyone may know. But we need to say it to make sure. Um, these pistons are marked with an arrow which generally points forward. Well, that would be fine, except that we have two pistons and one arrow goes forward and one goes back. So you say, what is that? Well, here's the other piston. And it's going to go in like that. Well, how do I know I've got it right? Okay. These pockets, I'm going to get this piston out of the way now. These pockets that are machined into the top of the piston, into the piston head itself, are to clear the valves. And a quick glance makes these pockets look the same size, but they aren't. This one is this size. Oh, who cares what the size is? It's that dimension. And then we go over here to the other one, and look at that. It's much smaller. Now, a quick glance makes them look the same, so the larger one needs to go in where the intake valve is. The intake valve being <clears throat> larger than the exhaust valve, we need more clearance there. So the intake valve is here, the exhaust valve is here, the intake valve is here, and the exhaust valve is here. Consequently, the pistons need to be oriented properly. Just something I wanted to mention rather quickly. The next thing is we did, of course, check the, uh, the piston rings for side clearance. And we have the proper amount as per the book. <laughs> there it is. And again, we did get the gap set right. So we're ready to go on all on all in all ways here. Everything is good. The next thing I'd like to mention, and this is something I learned when the Evolution Motors came out in back in 1984. Now, the way we put piston rings in in the old days, and this was whether it was a car, a motorcycle, a truck, a boat, it didn't matter. You would put your, your piston rings in and you would orient them so that the end gaps were in specific positions. Well, in the old days, you'd make them 120 degrees apart because you only have three, I mean, on a three-ring piston. And so all the end gaps would be spaced evenly apart and you were good to go. Well, Harley Davidson, in their wisdom, and I think this is wisdom, I really do, came up with a pattern for doing the evolution pistons. And here it is in the book on my trusty music stand, showing the positions of the piston rings, where the end gaps actually go. If you can see that, great. If not, look it up in your own service manual. It's a really good thing to know. Personally, I've done it on Evolution Motors ever since 1984. The other thing is, I like the pattern so much, I use it on everything. I use it in, in, on the Evolution, I use it on pan heads, I use it on shovel heads, knuckle heads. 
I just think it's a great pattern and it works extremely well. Have a look at it yourself. Again, these service manuals are pretty useful. Okay, I think that's enough of me blabbing. Um, what I think we're going to do, we're going to get ready to do this piston, but before we do that, we're going to clean this cylinder one more time. Okay, this is something that a little paranoia goes a long way. You want to clean this, and I'm just using isopropyl alcohol and paper towel and machine shop I used to hang out in. They used to use lacquer thinner and a paper towel. Same thing. But boy, I'm telling you, you do it until that thing comes out perfectly clean. You're clean. Life is good. Okay, I've cleaned that cylinder so many times at this point, it should be clean. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this wrist pin in and with a little luck it's going to slide in. I've got the piston warmed up just a little bit and so I'm going to take some motor oil and put it here on the wrist pin bushing that we've already installed here, installed and sized. And I'm going to get this wrist pin lubed up a little bit. That's pretty nice. And now we're going to just see if we can uh, put it in place. That was not very nice. Let's try that again. Well, let's see if we can just slide this wrist pin in here. I might mention that there's already a snap ring on the other side. I've already put it in. And I uh, think I'll just uh, slide this in here very carefully. Let me get my head in the way of the camera so we know I'm doing something. Get that wrist pin in there real careful like. <clears throat> and it doesn't seem to want to slide in real easy. So I'm going to do something ugly that I'm very proud of. And I'm going to just tap this in here a little bit. That's pretty nice. It's really nice when you have an extra pair of hands, but my extra pair of hands would be Mike here, and his extra hands are holding the camera. So let's see, let's get this right here, carefully uh, place it right here so we don't scratch the piston or the rings, or anything else. Now, we're going to need to put the snap ring in there. And being the kind of guy I am, I want to cover this up just in case. My magnetic bracelet off. OK. I'm going to cover all this up just in case the snap ring goes wild. It doesn't go into the motor. So we'll do that. All right. Everything looks pretty well covered up now. And uh, again, we just don't want to drop anything into the motor. Now, what I did is I went over to see my buddy Kenny, Kenny Spratt, at uh, American V Twin in Beaumont, California. And I said, Kenny, my hand is sore. Can I borrow your wrist pin keeper installer? And he said, sure. This is a very neat tool. Usually I like to show off my tools, now I'm showing Kenny's off. Okay, the way this goes in, let's see. We're going to, if I can remember correctly, I 
course, that is in. Okay. That is in. It is in perfectly. I think that is there. We heard it snap. That is like one of the coolest tools I have ever used. And that's done. That's in there. Now the next thing is before I can move these because there's no parts to drop in here. Before we put this cylinder on top of this piston here. Now please notice I put the base gasket on before I put the piston on the rod. But the piston is on the rod, the rings are on the piston, and all that good stuff. Now what we're going to do is we're going to oil up this cylinder, which we know is perfectly clean. And uh, we're just going to put some oil in here, make sure everybody in here is happy. Now there's such a thing as using too much oil. And, you know, this cylinder has a nice fresh hone job on it that I did with a ball hone. Real nice crosshatch in it. You know, nowadays we do a, uh, a more steep crosshatch than we used to. We learned from the guys at NASCAR that a steeper crosshatch works better than the shallower ones we ran years ago. It actually oils better during break-in. So it's a good thing. So now I want to put some oil on the skirts of these pistons. We don't want them to scuff, but we're going to put a little oil on the skirts. And there it is, all oiled nice. And the, and the cylinder has oil. Again, don't want to get carried away with the oil. And you want to be sure that you got your piston rings where you want them. Again, according to that wonderful diagram. So now, we're going to get this ring compressor out. This is a very high mileage old ring compressor I've had for a long time. Hence the term high mileage. Make sure it's oriented in the right direction. Because it's intended for automotive use, it says bottom, and you point that up, which is just the opposite of what you would think. Okay. So here we go. We're going to put this on here, and I do this like this. I find that it works really well. when I use the stud. Right here. Okay, we'll take this off of here. If it looks a little unorthodox, it's because I'm trying to do this with only two hands and it's the way I do it. And please bear with me. We're going to get this on here. Very carefully. Get that cylinder onto the piston. And that's why mechanics wear their hands out, or how they wear them out, actually. And we'll pull this up real careful like. Hope everyone enjoyed that as much as I did. That went very nicely. We're going to be real careful to be sure that cylinder goes into the base gasket and that the base gasket is down on its locating dowel, and it is. And now the cylinder 
has gone home. As long as we're doing that, we're going to put these nuts on here that a buddy of mine made for me years ago. I think they're a product you can buy now, but these were samples he made up and gave to me. And they will hold the cylinder in place. There we go. They will hold the cylinder in place while I do the other cylinder. But I don't think you need to see me do the other cylinder. I think it's adequate to see the one. We've got it done and I can do the other one when nobody's looking. And that should do it. Seems I was stepping on my cord and the cameraman just let me know. So anyway, um, on our next video I will have both cylinders on and hopefully I'll uh, have a pair of cylinder heads to do. So until then, see you out on the road.